Hey YouTube, it's Cash. So uh, today I'm going to be showing how to make something random. <laughs> something that's going to be, but it's very useful because I'm going to demonstrate next week actually a little bit and even with the next, next episode how it could fit in with a lot of different things. So the goal is to create something that's kind of like in a melody. It kind of has the illusion of rhythm, but it doesn't. There is actually a rhythm in it, but I hit it and there's a key, but I kind of hid that too. There's actually multiple things you can play over it, sharps and flats, so you have to be careful about. Other than that, you know, anything should be able to, to fit for the most part, and uh, lots of different rhythms will work as well. The reason why I did that is because I'm doing this with a cassette recording that's going to be played at half speed, which you'll hear. <laughs> And uh, will be played over my test equipment setup. In the last episode, I kind of like had to figure out what the pitches I wanted to use. In this episode, I actually created what I'm going to use, and I'm actually going to do some more um, uh, manipulation uh, when I do it with the uh, the test equipment setup. This is supposed to be the only three episodes in this series, but I ended up I'm going to be doing four. Um, I'm going to put one out quick next week too, just around Halloween, because uh, I ended up um, taking this and actually I was I think I was like, yeah, this may be a little boring do another demonstration where I can actually show how it works with like a lot of different things. And so I did that and it came out, uh, you know, a little sinister. So I thought it would be kind of appropriate for the holiday. I used an electric violin, a glockenspiel and an auto harp. The auto harp was kind of interesting. So I just kind of like layered it, made a bumper around the edge and out of cardboard. And then I used a marble and a couple of multi-sided uh, die. And I um, uh, held down a chord, which is not the key that I'm using, by the way, it's like an A, it's like an A minor, but it's that's not the key that's in. And I kind of shuffle it around. Um, I used a contact microphone underneath, and I mic'd it from above. And I the mic uh, through uh, Crowther Audio uh, Prunes and Custard, which created some cool harmonics. Um, kind of just thickened up the sound a bit. I love this pedal, by the way. The uh, the electric violin. And I'm just kind of like kind of playing around and having fun with it for the most part. But uh, I played that through the two Earthquaker machines. I did the uh, the C machine and uh, the rainbow machine in that order. Really cool uh, chorus-y sort of trails and stuff that are really interesting. So um, yeah, if you ever have these two, you know, try that. Especially if you have something that has like space in between, you really get some, some cool uh, sounds. I recorded just the glockenspiel just with the microphone. This microphone, as a matter of fact, this is a Shure SM54. This is actually a fantastic microphone for recording guitar amps. Uh, probably one of the best, if you've never tried it or heard of it. I recorded the glockenspiel with that. Um, I actually did that in a, in a more complex rhythm, and then I took pieces of it out. I used a, a table uh, that was created using the Pythagorean theorem. I actually took out the notes by uh, using the numbers off the table and uh, to create more this illusion of randomness that I was trying to achieve. That's pretty much it. You'll see more next week. Check it out. You'll be really surprised about what actually can be paired with this particular track. So uh, check it out. Hope you like it. Stay tuned. Thanks.